and cool. Hi, and welcome back to the inside of my head, where we're carrying on our review of Pacific Rim The Black. Oh, shit. And as you guys know, I've been waiting for quite a long time for this one, so I'm so excited! So hopefully it's not a complete letdown. I'm asking the question, is it more like the original, quirky and distinctive, or is it more like the sequel, which was trying to be cooler but ended up being completely forgettable? One small caveat is that I didn't plan this, but this is now turning into an epic web series longer than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So make sure you're all subscribed up so that you don't miss part three. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look. Mr. Normal Person is completely normal. So we've already covered episode one and two, and in episode three, they come across people. Oh my God, not people! And they probably should have learned from The Walking Dead that humans are often a bigger threat than zombies, or in this case, kaiju, or zombie kaijus. Ah, oh, there's a great idea, zombie kaijus. We, well, I wanna see that next. Focus, damn it. Uh, we see our next kaiju, a Chinese dragon style beast being hunted by these guys and led by Mei, who's this cool assassin girl from the trailer. And these guys are after the kaiju's eggs. The kaiju attacks and two of the mercs are eaten. And ooh, that's kind of gross. And Mei kills it by waiting till the last second and then firing an RPG down its throat. Bad ass. Mei seems friendly, but there's an air of, I don't really trust her and something wounded and dangerous about her. And I think she might be my favorite character. We meet these guys, the high-tech Jawa from the trailer. He's called Spider and he's like the IT support for his boss, Shane, who's running a racket selling kaiju eggs in exchange for Jaeger parts, including ka-ching, 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 a couple of power cells. What do these guys do with the eggs? Well, they trade them onto the mysterious sisters, but more on them later. Shane uses a neural bridge, a kind of drift, to see into Taylor's head and get the truth out of him. And this is how he finds out about Atlas Destroyer, which seems to be the thing he truly wants. So they go get Atlas and we meet Joel, an inebriated mech tech. No, you're drunk. And his eyes light up when he hears that Taylor is a pilot in training. Joel has a sarcasm tennis match with Loa. That's rich, coming from a battle Jaeger that got demoted to cadet driving instructor. Burn! Since you have piloted neither, your assessment is invalid. Ow! Burn! Unintentional sarcasm. That's kind of hot, actually. Ow! Burn! Oh, wait, no, that's just weird. Um, you know, whatever you're into, at least it's not, um... Anyway, none of these bad guys can drift and one guy has an epileptic fit which sets off loads of alarms wah, 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 wah. and attracts Copperhead back again. <coughs> May dress with Taylor and he sees that she was trained by Shane to be a killer at a young age. Later it turns out that he stole her from her parents. What the fuck? He stole her from her parents? I mean, like, is he, when he's not being a supervillain, is he like hanging around the school playground? What the fuck? That's weird as fuck. Anyway, Taylor and May have issues in their compatibility, so their strikes miss, and Copperhead rips off Atlas's arm and eats it. Eats it? Really? Do they really? What is it about a million tons of cold steel that you find appetizing? Can their digestive system actually cope with all this metal? When I was born. It'd be funny if this thing farted and then shot out a shitload of razor sharp metal shavings. Anyway, they shake off Copperhead by detonating a huge minefield that was part of a huge defense system put in by Shane. May and Joel, the JTEC, everybody vomits on themselves, escape with the kids in Atlas, but Shane detonates a bomb he'd planted in his radio and it takes Joel's head off. And that's pretty dark. I know anime is not for kids, obviously, but wow. Boy becomes fascinated by a newly opened up breach and wanders off to investigate. What is it with this kid? Like, he seems to love, like... <laughs> he eats a butterfly, he kills a poisonous snake, and he tries to stab a scorpion, and... Are you gonna do anything about this? I could start a petition. Anyway, it's almost as if this kid has got, like, an inbred killer instinct. Hmm... Sus AF. Anyway, whilst looking for him, Atlas falls down a valley where they see a kaiju graveyard, full skeletons of multiple breeds, of leatherbacks and slatterns, and Loa referring to them as breeds indicates that they're not one of a kind, and we could well be seeing more of these guys. November Ajax from the start of Uprising is down here too. Seriously? Seriously, yes. 
as well as Titan Redeemer and Valor Omega, as well as some Eye Jaegers. So I guess they've stumbled onto like a dumping ground for all the debris from what's now being referred to as the Drone Jaeger War. Loa has a meltdown on the mere mention of another Jaeger called Horizon Bravo. Multiple impacts, left pilot injured, right pilot did she know Horizon Bravo? I mean, were they friends? I mean, was it something, was it something more? I mean, could we be dealing with a Jaeger romance here? Or a, maybe he loved it, maybe he left her for a younger model. Oh, good one. Oh, I fucking high five myself for that one. Maybe Loa's like one of those people who every time you mention the name of her ex, her eyes is glass over and she goes and gets the biggest kitchen knife she can find to start shredding the curtains. But you see what happens? You see how complicated things get when you give these things a fucking personality? You know what I mean? This is why they left the personalities out of the movies. Because before you know it, you've got Jaeger Bickerfest where you guys all like, Bella Omega didn't get back to my message for like two hours. So I'm not going on a mission with them. She can fight the kaiju by herself. And they find Boy standing at the edge of the breach. And he's not afraid at all, even when an acid quill comes out. So Atlas has to jump in to protect him. Atlas is about to become kaiju food, but it's Biomech to the rescue. The Biomech sees Atlas as a threat though, and attacks it, and impossibly Boy stops one of its punches. It seems like the Biomech is trying to protect him somehow. Okay, seriously, we've got to talk about this kid. So we found him in a vat of green goo, so he can breathe underwater. He has telekinesis powers. Um, he hates animals, and yeah, I know what you're going to say. He hates animals, and he also has super, super strength. What is the dealio? Boy then establishes a neural connection with the Mecha Kaiju, and I guess he smooths it all over, and he tells it that Haley and Taylor and Atlas are friends, because Biomech, or Mecha Kaiju, whatever you want to call him, goes off, and he finds a spare arm from somewhere. What, did he just open a chest and it's full of fucking Jaeger arms? And he's like, oh yeah, no, you could just have this one. It's just lying around here. I just, you know, I never use it, so. Oh, wait, no, they're in that robot graveyard thing, aren't they? So I guess there would have been loads of robot bits around. Hold on a sec, I'm just going to slam my head into the desk and he brings it back, and it looks like we have a new ally. So the arm is from Mark IV Chaos Nemesis, and it finally gives Atlas a weapon, a saber chain. Oh yes. Like imagine Gypsy Danger's chainsword, you know, like when it's still flopping around before it gets like a hard, like a sword. Oh, I'm getting into dangerous territory here. You know, while it's still floppy. Oh, this is super innuendo-y. So you know when Gypsy's sword first comes out and then it's kind of just like flopping around like, oh no, this is no, there's no way that this is not sounding phallic. You know Gypsy Danger's chain sword, yeah? When it comes out and it's still floppy. Oh, you know what? Let's just forget the whole thing. It's a fucking whip that cuts stuff. Boy smiles at the biomech and climbs into Alice before it walks into the distance and leaves. Not now, you f***ing vermin. Can't you see I'm having a moment here? Wait a minute, is it you that reported me to Peter? I'll only be happy when you're dead! You diva-esque furry little cuddlewoggums. Cuddlewoggums. Okay, where were we? Boy smiles at the biomech and climbs into Alice before it walks into the distance and leaves. What, you think this is going to be the last that we see of this thing? No chance. No chance. Anyway, the last step begins with Taylor and Haley practicing with their new saber chain, and we get more lower sarcasm. I suppose you have advice you're dying to give to? Yes. Please hurry and improve. Like, what is with lower? I mean, like, boy draws a picture of himself being really, really, really big. So is that where this series is going, do you think? Like, the attack of the 300 meter high nine year old? <laughs> Holy shit, can you imagine the storm that would create on YouTube? Godzilla v Boy! Monkey v Boy, who would win? Bully Maguire makes Boy cry! Boy, all Easter eggs revealed! Boy versus Death Star size comparison! Boy cancelled by SJWs! Boy versus Superman, but which version of Superman? Brandon Ruth? Fuck no! Nobody likes Brandon Ruth! <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit carried away there. Okay, Jesus, we better get back to the plot recap. Um, so they find May in the middle of the city and there's this weird sort of dancing scene. It's quite a long one. It takes a long, quite a long time. Um, but it's quite a nice human moment. Human, yeah, right, sus. Then they finally find Hunter Vertigo, their parents, Jaeger, remember? Uh, 
uh, and it's lying crippled against the building and it's got a nuke lodged in the in the launcher um, that they weren't able to fire off. Copperhead shows up again. <laughs> Taylor leads him away and Copperhead uselessly stumbles over the top of him again. Copperhead seems kind of clumsy, have you noticed? Anyway, boy turns angry, and is this it? Is he gonna get really big? His eyes turn red, and it is, it is, this is it. And he manages to summon an energy bubble and wrap it around him and Taylor before turning into a kaiju himself. And oh, okay, I see now. Um, he's nowhere near as big as Copperhead and gets buried under a building. And Copperhead is about to strike when Atlas, piloted by Taylor and May, finally put that saber chain weapon to use and rip out a big chunk of Copperhead's chest. Ew and cool. But that doesn't stop him. They use the chain to cut off the kaiju's arm and Haley manages somehow to unjam that nuke in Hunter Vertigo's launcher. How? I don't know. How she managed to do it and the parents couldn't. I don't know, but you know, okay, let's overlook that. She manages to fire the nuke into the hole in Copperhead's chest. How she managed to aim it that precisely, I don't know, but okay, let's gloss that over as well. And Kablamo, finally Copperhead is down and take that, you big clumsy motherfucker. And then we end with seeing these mysterious masked figures flanked by clearly domesticated kaiju dogs. And they say, sisters, the kaiju messiah has come. Now, my theory on this is that these are the kaiju worshippers that we've heard about here and there throughout this universe. And this is their sigil that we've seen several times throughout the black. If you, if you look carefully, you can see it dotted around. I can't go and find all the footage for you, but trust me. So we know that whoever these guys are, they were the ones buying the kaiju eggs from Sean. What they were doing with the kaiju eggs, we don't know. There's a line in it somewhere saying that, that the kaiju eggs aren't actually editable. One guy apparently tried eating it and then dissolved half of his face. So it's not that. My guess would be that they're just using them for some shrine or something so they can go and pray to their kaiju god. Obviously while they wait for kaiju god to send kaiju Jesus and that's this guy. There's also a line in there somewhere, I can't figure out exactly where it was, but someone mentions at some point that they think that the boy wasn't engineered by people but it was the precursors that have made a kaiju that looks like us. I guess like an infiltration unit, you know, like a T-800. So what are my overall thoughts? Well, you know what? I really liked it. I really liked it. Um, it was different to what I was expecting. Some of the questions that I wanted answered either didn't get answered at all or just kind of got glossed over really quickly. So that was a little bit annoying. But then other questions that I didn't expect to get answered kind of did. So... Maybe that balances out. Honestly, I can see that some people won't like it because it is different to what's come before. But just because it's different doesn't make it bad. But I was okay with this being different because it is a spin-off. It's blatantly spin-off. They've changed the entire medium. It's not live action anymore. Like with Uprising, I think if they had called that a spin-off instead of calling it a sequel, I probably would have been more accepting of it. Okay, guys, I feel like I could talk about this all day, so I'm going to cut it off here. But I'm going to do another video, a part three. Uh, where I'm going to talk about some of the plot points, some of the easter eggs. There's definitely some plot holes in there that need discussing. I'm going to do my favourite kaiju, I'm going to do my favourite Jaeger, where it could potentially go in season 2, and generally just get really in-depth and nerdy with my thoughts on this. So that video is going to be full of fun stuff! And hopefully I'll be able to upload it either later today, or at some point tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. As always, guys, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I know my channel is just a tiny, tiny drop in the YouTube ocean, so massive thank yous. Now get out of my head, there's no more room for you with all this Kaiju and Jaeger stuff. <laughs>